Welcome to the new video of MRCS for Beginners. Today we will discuss about the Fosia sheet, paper 2, second part. So number 39 questions. A 24-year-old man is brought to the emergency department following a road traffic accident. He has obvious airway compromise due to the mouth or facial hemorrhage, which requires a surgical airway. The surface landmark used to localize the optimal site for a tracheostomy incisions are midway between the suprasternal notch and which of the following? The suprasternal notch and the mid of the cricoid. That is the landmark to do the surgical airway tracheostomy. The answer is the cricoid. Number 40. A 60-year-old man has an anterior resection for a higher rectal carcinoma. The histopathology report indicates the lesions Dux stage B. What is the approx approximate average 5-year survival rate for the patient with these symptoms? So, for a stage A is almost over 90%. For B, 75 to 60 around or 60 to 80. Dux C is around 1 4 25 to 30 and d is less than 1 so here is b so 60 to 80 so the answer is 70 41 a 20 year old man presents to the emergency department after accidentally tripping over and lacerating in hand on a glass bottle on examination there is a two centimeter resolutions on the hypothenar eminence with a loss of flexion of the distal interphalangeal joint of the little finger. What is the most likely tendon to be injured? Two tendons are most important on the flexor compartment of the hand. One is FDP and one is FTS. The FTS inserted into the middle or proximal interphalangeal joint and it is splits between two half. The FDP runs in between it and attached to the distal interphalangeal joint i mean dip in short to uh, memorize so the answer here is fdp flexor digitorum profundus it says the distal interphalangeal joint problem Number 42, a 75 year old man who smokes heavily underwent coronary artery bypass grafting six months ago. A left internal memory artery graft was used. Now he complains of angina of pegging his laundry of the washing line to dry. Just like this, this means when he lift up his arm above his shoulder, it causes pain or discomfort. Usually, it denotes there is a problem of the circulations, uh, the vertebral circulations, the subclavian artery still syndrome we think about, but the, there is a stenosis here on the vertebral artery, on the subclavian, before the origins of the vertebral artery. I mean, the stenosis is here. So that is why the blood cannot go through this the vertebral artery hampered and that is why on lifting his arm above there is a pain or discomfort the still syndrome is that it, if there is a problem here this right-sided blood will go circle of willis and the obstructed part on the left side the blood direction is from the opposite blood comes from the opposite side so that is why the left part takes, takes blood from the right side through circle of Willis. This is called subclavian steel syndrome. Seen in the photo, it can clearly denote the situations. The answer here is Stenosis of the subclavian artery proximal to the first branch. That is the answer. Now 45. 
A 50-year-old alcoholic man presents to the emergency department and is found to unable to extend his wrist, thumb, fingers of his right hand. So unable to extend. He is found to have weakness, weak extension on the right elbow joint and loss of sensation over the dorsum of the first wave space. This is very much important. This is the area first. Uh, this is the area first of space is not innervated so that is supplied by the radial nerve also unable to extend that means the posterior compartment is also lost its function so the answer is the radial nerve 44 a 55 year old man presents with acute back pain following a severe or traffic accident neurological examination reveals lack of dorsiflexions of the left ankle left ankle joint dorsiflexion uh, not working which of the following spinal cord segment is most likely to be injured this is a short note l4 5 and s1 l4 is quadriceps for the knee l5 for the great toe or the dorsiflexions of the toe and s1 is for the ankle joint the plantar flexions the question is asked Uh, lack of dorsiflexions of the left ankle joint so the answer is l4 5 and s1 mainly consists of l4 so here l4 is here 2 3 4 but i cannot uh, we cannot include l2 and 3 because above the knee it is okay or fine so answer is L5, S5, L4, L5, and S1. Number 45. A 20-year-old man is admitted to the emergency department with a stab injury to his right chest. Pulse is 110. Under 10, blood pressure low, 85 by 40. Chest x show a large right hemothorax and a very small right apical hemothorax. Which of the first substance secreted in the process leading to decrease renal reabsorption of the sodium in response to above injury so it's kind of physiological question body uh, try to retain water so the renin will be released in response to reabsorb sodium 46 a 21 year old man has been stabbed in the back of the knee i mean the popliteal fossa dividing the popliteal artery and is undergoing repair via posterior approach. Which of the following structures is most likely to be encountered first? So we are coming from skin to the deep. So on the skin, first we will approach this structure, the tibial nerve. But, but the theme is here, we have to study the popliteal fossa and the contents of it very carefully. The first two gastrocnemias, here is semitendinosus and the biceps femoris at the boundary. The contents from the superficial to deep, we will see the popliteal, the tibial nerve, the popliteal vein, and very close to the knee capsule is the artery. The artery lies deep to the popliteal fossa. But here the answer is the popliteal, sorry, the tibial nerve because it is the first to be encountered. 47. A 78 year old woman presents with urinary urgency and incontinence. The external urethral sphincter is innervated by which of the following roots? The external uh, urethral sphincter. So, micturition center lies on the pontine micturition center, the sympathetic nerve to the bladder is by the T10 to L2. And the parasympathetic from the pelvic nerve all the s234 this parasympathetic supplies uh, the external urethral sphincter or the somatic area the somatomotor nerve that it supplies the external urethral sphincter normally it contracts but when we try to micture it we it it become relaxed so the answer here the external urethral is factor is applied by the pudendal nerve that is s234 48 a 40 year old 
women present with a parotid tumor. A biopsy reveals perineural invasion. What is the most likely pathology? The parotid tumor has two types, classification benign and the malignant. The most common benign are the pleomorphic and the most common malignant is mucoepidermoid, mucoepidermoid carcinoma. But in adenoid cystic carcinoma, perineural or neural innervation is common. So the answer here is the adenoid cystic carcinoma. But if the question asked, what is the most common malignant? That is mucoepidermoid carcinoma. 49. A 19-year-old man was assaulted and sustained injuries to the right side of his head. After two weeks, he notices a dial his right eye is dry and it could not produce tears. From which ganglion postsynaptic fibers arises to supply the lacrimal gland? The in answer is pterygopalatine ganglion. But let's dig into it if for a few minutes. There are four cranial nerves that supplies the parasympathetic nerve. Notice three, seven, eight, three, seven, nine, ten. Three, seven, nine, ten. The three ocular motor gives rise to the ciliary, which supplies the eye. The seven gives rise to sphenopalatine that supplies that supplies the lacrimal gland and the mucus of the nose and the palate. The seven also supplies the submandibular gland and the 9 and 10. The 9 supplies the otic ganglion. This otic supplies the parotid gland. This is most important. And also the mucus of the mouth. The last one, the vagus nerve. The 10 is the rest of the body. The parasympathetic supply usually to the heart, lung and the GI tract. So 3, 7, 9, 10. Also, we also need to memorize what are the other parasympathetic flow. One is the cranial and one is the sacral outflow. The sacral outflow, this supplies to this genitalia, urethra and the rectum. And the sympathetic or the thoracolumbar outflow are this. Please have a look of this picture because there's lots of questions that can become through this picture. Okay. Moving to the next question, 50. A 35-year-old man undergoes a right inguinal hernia repair under a general anesthesia as a day case. Uh, he has a nerve block after the procedure. On recovery, he has a weakness on the right leg. Which nerve has been affected? The right answer is the femoral nerve because femoral nerve supplies the whole lower limb, mainly the anterior part. The posterior part is supplied by the sciatic and mainly the sciatic so answer is here the femoral nerve 51 a man suffers a brachial plexus injury on examination he has a horner syndrome he is associated with upper limb paralysis which nerve roots does the horner syndrome suggested the involvement the horner syndrome lies on the lower part of the cervical and the upper part of the thorax so is the answer is c8 is a t1 what is the horner syndrome so from here we already mentioned in earlier cases the thoracolumbar outflow so from the thorax the sympathetic output goes so sympathetic output goes to uh the, the sympathetic output goes to the eye and the neck area, head neck area. If this happened, if uh, this sympathetic outflow obstructed, the parasympathetic activity will dominate. That's why the half side of the face will go the ptosis. Ptosis is a features of parasympathetic. There is a myosis. I, I, pupil will be constricted as the myosis will occur and the anhydrosis or hyperemia because the dilations of the blood vessel is responsible for the hyperemia so unilateral side ptosis myosis anhydrosis are the features of horner syndrome 52 a 60 year old woman with a breast carcinoma complains of difficulty chewing heart difficulty chewing that means muscle of mastication has been involved and 
found and uh, is found to have numbness of the lower lip okay and on the on one side ct scanning shows a small metastatic lesion affecting the bony skull bone the same side of the lip numbness which foramen is the most likely to involve so the mandibular divisions of the trigeminal nerve supplies the muscle of mastication and also it is a as it is a common nerve both sensory and motor root the sensory nerve supplies the same sided lower limb lower lip patient also has a lower lip a numbness so from where the mandibular nerve leaves the basal base of the skull it is the foramen ovale in short we can remember m a l e mandibular division of trigeminal nerve accessory accessory nerves lesser petrosal nerve and uh, emissary veins not only that this question denotes that we have to read all the important foramen lies on the uh, base of the skull please have a look at this this is just a summary optic nerve superior orbital fissure inferior orbital fissure foramen rotundum uh, foramen ovale internal acoustic meters, jugular foramen, hypoglossal canal, and some minor openings. That's not important, but these are the mainly important foramen need to uh, answer in the, co in the exam. 53. Which of the following muscles is an extensor of the hip? Extensor of the hip. So, this is the muscle responsible from different movements of the hip joint the flexor is mainly from the anterior side the iliopsoas and the rectus salterius tension fascia lata pectineus sometimes the longus magnus and gracilis but that's very minor from the extensor part it is from the posterior side so all the gluteus muscles the gluteus maximus medius and the hamstring adductor is on the medial side so it's also the medial part of medial compartment of the thigh so pectineus and the adductor longus brevis gracilis abductor mainly the medius and minius very important lateral rotator and the medial rotator here it denotes what is the extensor so adductor longus uh, is not is adduction gracilis is also adductor also in the flexion iliosoas flexor pectinus flexor but semi tendinous this is kind of extensor though not primarily is, is it's an uh, at extensor but it helps because uh, other options do not uh, help in extensor at all Fifty-four. In order to expose the right axial, right axillary artery, a transverse skin incision is typically made below the clavicle, from a point lateral to the external sternal end to the clavicle, to the deltopectoral groove. To the deltopectoral groove. Which of the following structures would be encountered? The dissecting down the vessel. The answer is thoracolumbar artery. 55. A 55-year-old uh, man presents to the emergency department after collapsing. So on examination, his pulse 120, blood pressure 60-30, hypotensive respiratory 34 beats per minute, and his peripherals are warm. So his patient is in, in shock as the peripheral is warm. So just go for the sepsis because of vasodilations peripheral vasodilations 56 if the peripheral was cool and calm what could be the answer we could think about most probably hypovolemia also maybe cardiac but mainly hypovolemia or hemorrhagic all the same but if warm sepsis without concerning and without any confusion 56 in the posterior lateral approach the posterior malleolar fracture an incision is made between the calcaneus tendon and the distal fibula. So this is the calcaneus and the distal fibula. So which falling structures is at risk? That's the sural nerve is at risk. 
57, a 25 year old woman undergoes an elective right thoracoscopic procedure for treatment of right palmar hyperhidrosis. Triathermy is applied in a neural neutral uh, neural structures lying anterior to the neck, tire right first rib. So that is a ganglion. You are always you heard about the stellate ganglion that is situated just in close to the first rib. So uh, most likely complication to occur as a result of this procedure. This is a T1. The involvement of the T1 will hamper the sympathetic outflow and that is called Horner syndrome. 58. A 33-year-old man presents to the orthopedic outpatient clinic with a six-month history of low back pain radiating to the lateral aspect of the left upper thigh. Maturation certifications are normal and there is no history of previous injury. On examinations, left lateral flexions of the spine is limited but a full range of hip movement are, are observed, although it is painful. Sensation altered over the front of the knee and the left knee reflex is reduced. So knee reflex, which, which is the root value? That's the L4. Answer is the L4. Have you take a look. The ankle by the S1 biceps c5 supinatal c6 and the triceps c7 number 59 a 25 year old motorcyclist is admitted following a road traffic accident he being sustained bilateral femoral fracture and a ruptured spleen three days post-operatively uh, lie is noted to be confused hypoxemic and difficult to ventilate his observation shows a blood pressure 120 80, so normal, regular pulse 88, good, he is apyrexic. A chest x-ray show bilateral diffuse lung infiltrates. This is the key point. What is the most likely diagnosis? Bilateral diffuse lung infiltrates with shortness of breath, difficult to ventilate, hypoxemic confusion due to uh, low saturation. Answer goes to adult respiratory distress syndrome (ARDS). On on an ultrasound scan of the popliteal fossa, when investigating a swelling, which of the following structure closest to the capsule? Closest to the capsule. What very few earlier we discussed about it. This is the artery. Yes, the artery lies very close to the knee joint. But if we dissect from the skin, the first thing we will encounter is the tibial nerve. So the answer here, popliteal artery. 61. 25-year-old man sustains a twisting injury while playing football. He develops immediate swelling, immediate swelling of the knee joint. Important. He cannot continue the game. Six months later, he is still not able to play football. His knee feels unsteady tends to give away tends to give away that means uh, the bones are dislocated from the joint that is called in term give away on examination he has a full range of knee motions there is a positive positive anterior draw test small effusions so clear cut this is the acl injury anterior cruciate ligament injury on the pcl there will be the uh, positive posterior draw test Meniscus injury is usually by uh, pop sound. Patient will say the immediate pop sound. A 62-year-old man required a partial gastrectomy for a large benign ulcer in the gastric entrum. When he is reviewed in the clinic, six months later, he complains of palpitations, weakness, sweating, along with a cramp-like abdominal pain which occurs within an hour of eating a meal. Pain, cramp-like abdominal, cramp-like abdominal pain within an hour. He has to lie down for 30 to 40 minutes until his symptoms subside. What is the most likely cause of this pattern? So the answer is the dumping syndrome. So there is two types of dumping syndrome. One is the early and one is the early and one is late. So when the footballers goes to uh, goes to in in the guards, 
it draws a lot of fluid into it. And as the patient has been resected, a short bowel, this food bolus will go to uh, causes diarrhea immediately. So diarrhea is an early dumping syndrome. Also, the fluids are lost from uh, the fluids are lost from the body cavity. So his BP will draw. As a result, patient will have a tachycardia, and he will feel dizziness. So that is why he will lie down. It says in here that when he lie down, it feels better. And after a few hours, the late, sim late dumping syndrome will occur as there, uh, when the food goes into the lumen, in pancreas is stimulated and it secretes uh, lots of lots of insulin. But after a few, after a uh, few uh, minutes or hours, that glucose will enter into the cell. But still, in the blood, there is high rise of insulin. The insulin concentration it is still in very rise because pancreas was suddenly uh, stimulated, secret insulin, secret insulin. So without thinking the amount, he secretes a lot of insulin. This insulin will cause hypovolemic shock. Sorry, uh, hypoglycemic shock. So hypoglycemia is a features of lead dumping syndromes. Diarrhea, dizziness, these all are early dumping syndromes. Okay. 63. In septic shock, noradrenaline used to increase the systemic vascular resistance. This action is result in stimulation of which, uh, which of the following. The, in the shock, body try to increase the systemic vascular resistance. So on the vascular contractions of the valve is alpha 1. A 56 year old man presents with acute epigastric pain and vomiting. On examination, he has girding on upper abdomen and his blood test. So girding means yes, there is um, uh, either, either perforations or any inflammations. So acute abdomen, features of acute abdomen. So what is the blood result? His amylase is very high. LT okay, ALP okay, albumin okay, gamma gamma is very high. Bilirubin okay, triglyceride lit high. So patient is suffering from what? The most probably acute gas, acute epigastric and vomiting. Patient an old man, so patient is most probably have suffered uh from gastric outlet obstructions, acute pancreatitis, most probably, because his other liver function test is normal. So in the Western world, it is, amylase is very high. So also, duodenal rupture, it can be happen. Also, gut injury, amylase also rise, and most probably is indicated to acute pancreatitis in Western world. Conditions of alcohol is the first cause of acute pancreatitis. Yes, there is some mums, there is hypercalcemia, some drugs, some other causes of acute pancreatitis. But in Western world, always, always, the alcohol is the first cause. 65. A 47-year-old woman with the end stage of renal failure recurs an elective cholecystectomy for symptomatic gallstone disease. Our hemoglobin is low, 7.2. What is the major cause of our anemia? In distress, renal failure. Always think about erythropoietin. Erythropoietin is a normal physiological phenomenon which cannot be released. That is why patient is having this anemia. 66. 60-year-old 60 man undergoes cystectomy, a bladder carcinoma. During surgery, the ureter are identified on which region the bladder do the ureter pierce the bladder wall so that is the base of the posterior wall just the posterior wall uh posterior surface same thing 67 a 65 year old man had a colonic resection for a carcinoma 12 hours ago he is now passing concentrated urine at a rate of 0.5 ml per kg per hour which endocrine response is most likely to have cause this
As the patient has a lots of blood loss during operations because colonic resections, so body will try to intend to uh, try to catch the water, free water. So that is caused by vasopressin, ADH. The answer is E. All 68. A 28-year-old man presents with an ischiorectal abscess. Where is the abscess cavity is likely to be situated? Okay, just look at the picture here. This guy is ischiorectal fossa. And all the external or internal muscles are lies medial to it. But this is the pudendal canal. This pudendal canal lies lateral to it. So this is medial to this and this Fossa is lateral to this. Above the levator ani, no. Between the external and internal canal, canal, no. Lateral to obturator internus, no. Medial to the internal anal sphincter, no. Medial to the pudendal nerve, yes. The answer is the E. 69. A 36 year old man falls on his outstretched right hand examination reveals tenderness in the anatomical snap box which of the following tendons forms the boundary of the anatomical snap box anatomical snap box very important the border is formed by the epl extensor pollicis tendon and the lateral border formed by two tendons epb extensor pollicis brevis and abductor pollicis longus proximally styloid process of the radius floor is formed by the carpal bones, scaphoid and trapezius. The contents is important, radial artery, superficial branch of radial nerve and the cephalic vein. Now, which forms the boundary? Abductor pollicis brevis, no. Exosan carpi radialis, no. Carpi radialis, no. Extensor indices, no. Extensor pollicis longus, that's the answer. 70. A 55-year-old woman complains of cramps and tingling of her legs and arms 48 hours following a subtotal thyroidectomy. So subtotal thyroidectomy, uh, also the parathyroid gland will also remove that way hypocalcemia may occur. And that is why symptoms, cramps and tingling of arms and legs. Let's see the what are the other information is given. Her vital stable investigation reveal Normal WBCK, normal hemoglobin, sodium 132, okay, potassium 3.2, okay, calcium 1.6, it is low. So we should give calcium chloride. 40 years old women presents with fecal incontinence and anatomically intact internal and external anal sphincter, which structures is most likely to have been damaged. So which nerve supplies? The external anal sphincter mainly because that's the reason for the fecal incontinence. That's the pudendal nerve. What is the root value? It's 2, 3, 4. Sacral 2, 3, 4. 72. Abdominal free fluid will collect in the lowest part of the peritoneal cavity at operations when the patient is supine. This is important. Which of the following fluid will be accumulated first? So mainly that during supine position, two space are more dependent, hepatorenal. And on the pelvic cavity, the pecto pouch of Douglas. So in here, uh, hepatorenal absence, hepatorenal pouch or the Morrison pouch is the most common. 73, a 45 year old homeless man presents with a cough. Homeless is the key. Cough, weight loss over three months on examinations. BMI is 19, very emaciated. He has reduced breath sound in right upper zone, right upper zone, very key point. His chest x-ray show cavitatory lesions in the right upper lobe, undergoes bronchoscopy, bronchial biopsy, shows uh, necrosis surrounded by epithelial macrophage and giant cell. Which of the following is the most likely diagnosis? Very typical. It's the TB. It's the very much TB. Uh, if in, in the exam is mentioned in Asian or Indian that also denotes they are suspecting TB. 74. A healthy 36-year-old man is being assessed with a view 
to being a life-related kidney donor, which of the following investigation is most accurate of measuring the GFR? That is the inulin clearance, creatinine, glucose, urea, and pH, and not. The idea, what is the ideal characteristics or chemical uh, to measuring the GFR? It cannot be produced in the body. It cannot be reabsorbed. Uh, whatever you take externally, it will go to the urine without, without any loss. That chemical should not cause any harm to the body. That is the criteria. And inulin uh, has this criteria. That is that why we uh, measure GFR by the inulin clearance. 34-year-old pregnant woman develops a swollen leg. Pregnant women, swollen leg. So what do you think first? Yes, embolism. Her mother and maternal aunt also had the similar problem. So very familiar genetic issues during their pregnancy. Which of the following tests is to be positive? So this is very common antiphospholipid syndromes. Antiphospholipid syndrome is the most common. Uh, unfortunately, it has a miscarriage, multiple miscarriage history. Okay, 76. A 72-year-old alcoholic man is known to suffer from chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, uh, COPD. He has now diagnosed with carcinoma of the urinary bladder and he has a history of gastric cancer. Which of the following agents is most likely to be responsible? So patient has COPD, carcinoma of the urinary bladder, gastric ulcer, straight car, that's the cigarette smoking. Cigarette Yes, you can convert up a cigarette, but does cigarette do COPD? No, no. C smoking is directly connected to the COPD. 77. A three-year-old boy is admitted to hospital with severe vomiting, radiological image examination, and history reveals that he is suffering from annular pancreas. So annular pancreas means that usually the pancreas lies over here, the head but in the annular pancreas it obstructed the gut like a ring if you see from the above this is the gut and this is this is the pancreas so it's very dangerous it it causes bowel obstructions so which this act constricted so very common i i think you already know the answer the second part of the dvd number 78 a 45 year old man presence with a 3 by 4 centimeter swelling in the right groin which is non-tender a calf impulse is elicited at operations and indirect inguinal hernia is found the external inguinal ring is defect which of the following abdominal the external inguinal ring is a defect of which of the following abdominal the external ring is formed by the external oblique aponeurosis 79 a 49-year-old woman suffers from spina bifida and is confined to the wheelchair. Her legs are not fully developed. What is the pathological process? Spina bifida means it's a congenital permanent disability, meningocele, and, and so the neural tube defect due to uh, some triatogenic drugs and also some vitamin deficiency during pregnancy. And for this, the nerve, uh, the spinal nerve has not been developed to the lower segment of this from the defect so that is why the nerve supply to the legs uh, has not been fully developed that is why the atrophy is the answer some may develop the hypoplasia yes that can be but in in my opinion the atrophy is the main answer because uh, spina bifida is solely the defect of the neural tube or the neuron so due to the lack of supply of the neuron to the lower extremity the atrophy will occur. 80. A 23-year-old man is present to the emergency department with non-specific chest pain. A posterior anterior chest radiogram performed and is normal. Immediately, inferior caudal to the outline of the aortic knuckle was further uh, a structure with a convex caudal. What is this structure? That means the question asked uh, they suddenly so show a aortic knuckle. This is the aortic knuckle, and they showed they showed a convex border. They asked about what is this convex structure. So the answer 
is the pulmonary trunk. It's the pulmonary trunk. Read the question again. It says, uh, immediately, immediately inferior to the cord to the outline of the aortic knuckle. So being below the aortic knuckle, what's the structure? Pulmonary trunk. A 45-year-old woman presents to the hospital with a jaundice. She undergoes an ultrasound scan and is diagnosed with a hepatocellular carcinoma affecting the left lobe of the liver. Which virus is the most likely to be? That's the hepatitis C virus, hepatocellular carcinoma, 45 years old. It's a very common uh, hepatitis, uh, hepatitis C virus. But is the hepatitis C easier? No. Then the hepatitis B is the answer. Hepatitis B virus. Okay. 82. An 82-year-old man has completed in occlusions of the inferior mesenteric artery on angiogram, but no symptoms, signs. So that means the inferior mesenteric artery supplies the descending colon, two-thirds of the, uh, uh, sorry, one-third, two-thirds of the transverse colon, descending colon, and the sigmoid colon, but is obstructed. But it's still... There is no sign and symptoms of polonic ischemia. Which of the following arteries is the most likely additional source of blood supply to this territory of the inferior mesenteric artery? So that means inferior mesenteric artery got anastomosed with some 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 another artery. So that will compensate the obstructions of the inferior mesenteric artery. That is the middle colic artery. You already know the marginal artery. Uh, Dumbbell artery, marginal artery. Uh, if you can see the images, you will see there's an arcade going all through, uh, from all through from the colon side. So that is the main reasons the medial colic artery compensate the losses of inferior mesenteric artery. So that is the end of this video today. I hope in the next video we will start from the 83 number questions. Please check out the other videos of my channel. If you like it, you can subscribe it and share it to your friends who might be helped by watching the contents. Thank you very much. I hope we will see you in the next video. Bye. Bye-bye. Till then.